All right, I want to go into a little more detail on fatty acid metabolism here. So I just want to do a refresher real quick. So fats consist of glycerol, okay, and glycerol is kind of like the backbone molecule. And then attached to that glycerol molecule are three fatty acid chains, okay? And those fatty acid chains can be saturated or unsaturated. It depends on the circumstances, depends on the uh, chemistry. And they can either have an odd or an even number, okay? Generally, we see fatty acids that have an even number, um, and I'll explain why in a few minutes, but they can have either even or odd numbers of um, carbons, essentially, in the fatty acid chain. So fats are also important for energy storage, okay? Um, and they're especially important for mobile organisms. Um, because fats can store more energy per gram than glycogen. Now that's a, that's interesting if you just think about it for a quick second, that um, if you have an animal, especially something like a bird, okay, a bird has to fly, a bird has to get off the ground, all right? Could you imagine what would happen if a bird were to try and store all of its energy in the form of glycogen? Well, I know I don't have all the details here, but I will tell you that glycogen is much heavier than fat, okay? So if you were to try and store the same amount of energy in glycogen as you were to store in fat, um, the bird would never get off the ground, essentially. So that's where these fats really come into play, is that they can be a really, really valuable um, energy source to an organism, and, you know, rightfully so. I mean, this is this is basically how it works, what, what, what you would want. Um, you'd want to get maximum energy if you were a mobile organism. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there and um, move on then to the main process. So the main process of, um, it's a, the, the, basically the main way fatty acids are broken down is by this process called beta oxidation, okay? And it's essentially the process that results in the removal of two carbons at a time from a fatty acid, leading to the production of acetyl-CoA, okay? And we all know acetyl-CoA is one of those main, you know, that's a, sort of that um, main molecule. It's sort of that, that enters that sort of main pathway, the citric acid cycle, okay? So we know um, acetyl-CoA, you know, a lot of things, a lot of different pathways eventually lead to the production of acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle and produces a lot of energy, produces a lot of ATP um, by, by um, oxidative phosphorylation and such. Um, but the point, the point being here is that beta oxidation is the main process um, by which these fatty acids are broken down, okay? And I just want to kind of show my version of this whole process. Um, so if we're talking about fatty acid degradation, okay? So we have, everything's arbitrary here. There's just, you know, some fatty acid. I don't know, you know, the R stands for, you know, the R over here stands for, um, you know, extension of the chain. I don't know how many carbons it is. Um, but anyway, you'll get the point. This is a generalized mechanism. So we have this activated acyl group on the end here, all right? And the first process, the first reaction is an oxidation, okay? And that oxidation winds up forming this double bond, okay, between carbons two and three here, all right? So we form this double bond between carbons two and three. And, um, so just recall, oxidation is loss of electrons, okay? So we lose some electrons, we form a double bond, we oxidize the molecule. Okay, then from there we're going to do like a hydrogenation essentially. We're going to add H2 or add hydrogen across the double bond. And it's a common um, process we see in organic chemistry. And essentially what that leads to is this formation of a stereocenter here with um, an alcohol. Okay, so we form an alcohol essentially, or a hydroxyl group, okay, rather is on this car on this third carbon here all right and this one receives just a normal hydrogen okay so from there the next process in the breakdown is another oxidation step okay and that oxidation step results in the formation of a carbonyl group here okay so what we wind up here it, what we wind up with here is these two carbonyl groups here and um, and from there we want to cleave that then and the cleavage of these two here essentially in, the, in this spot right here, you wind up having this cleavage here, and what you wind up with is this being, being the acetyl, um, this being the um, part of the fatty acid that is going to remain after the loss of two carbons. So this is gonna lose two carbons, okay? And then we look over here and we have essentially what it will be acetyl-CoA, 
okay, will essentially be a um, two carbon um, group, okay, one two carbon. So it's a methyl and this carbonyl here, so it's two carbons, this is acetyl CoA, and essentially that will enter the citric acid cycle. Okay, but over here, we'll wind up with you know, a fatty acid chain that will continue to go through another round of beta oxidation, okay? And that will continue until um, essentially the entire fatty acid chain has been oxidized. So until you've broken the entire thing down into, um, you know, into two carbon pieces of acetyl-CoA and that enters the citric acid cycle. Now the process, the, the main thing I want to point out by by showing you guys all this is not so much that, you know, this is some kind of, um, you know, long mechanism that you probably won't have to remember, honestly, but j just to kind of point out that the process of fatty acid degradation, the process of fatty acid synthesis are almost, you know, mirror images of each other, essentially. They're, they're um, the reverse. They're almost the reverse, okay? I don't ever want to say they're the exact reverse because they're not. But they're they're pretty damn close, and that's that's the point I'm making here, and, and the process is almost the same. So what we end up with here is we start with this three carbon piece, okay? One, two, three carbons right here. So we have three carbons, and that's known as a Milano, an activated Milano group, okay? And that's going to then combine in a condensation reaction. Remember, a condensation reaction forms a new carbon-carbon bond, and um, in the process we wind up with a um, in the in the process. Uh, we lose a small molecule, that's the condensation part, so something like water is going to be lost. But anyway, um, and we have the activated acyl group, okay? So we have some activated acyl group here, all right? So this three carbon and this activated acyl group, which has a you know an extended fatty acid chain on it, are going to condense, okay? And they're going to condense and form a molecule that looks like this, okay? So you're still gonna have the activated group on here, you know, um, but you're also going to have now this chain, okay, this extended chain. So now this condensation has resulted in a much larger molecule. From the condensation of this molecule, forming this um, molecule, we have a re we go through a reduction. And recall, a reduction is the gain of electrons, okay? Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So we're going to gain some electrons, and what we're going to form is a hydroxyl. We're going to have a hydroxyl group and form another alcohol here, okay? And that's essentially what I'm trying to show in this in this here, minus some of my um, poor artistry and poor handwriting, is that we have this um, hydroxyl group formed here. From there, we're going to go through a process of dehydration. Okay, so similarly, on the other side, we saw a hydration reaction for fatty acid degradation. Now, on this fatty acid synthesis, we're seeing a dehydration. Okay, and that dehydration is rever is um, is re resulting in this formation of a double bond. Okay, so this formation of this double bond here as a result of the dehydration. So we're losing a hydrogen here and losing a hydrogen here. Um, and then we're going to go through a process here of reduction. Okay, reduction once again, and reduction results in reduction results in the process of um, losing that double bond. Okay, we essentially add add two more hydrogens across. We lose the double bond, and what we're left with is an activated acyl lengthened by two carbons. Okay, so essentially we've added two carbons to that to that chain. Okay. And that's pretty much the process of fatty acid synthesis. So moving back into what I was talking about previously here, I talked about beta oxidation. Now there's an interesting thing about beta oxidation. There's very little regulation during the process of beta oxidation. Okay, the only regulation occurs at this enzyme lipase. It's called triacylglycerol lipase. Okay, and so there is some regulation, but it's only on this one specific mechanism. And now I'm going to also explain here why most fatty acids are even number carbons. Okay, they have an even number of carbon atoms because if you think about it, this breakdown is in the process of, uh, it occurs by two carbons. So two, you know, two can divide into an even number. So if you have say 16 carbons, you have eight acetyl-CoA molecules um, produced. Okay, um, seven rounds of beta oxidation. Um, it's always one less because you're not going to go through beta oxidation for that final splitting. The, the, last, the last two carbon piece is going to kind of come off um, automatically. So you don't have to go through another round. So triacylglycerol lipase um, is the only enzyme that's regulated um, in the breakdown of fatty acids. And this regulation is accomplished by phosphorylation cascade. Okay, Essentially what happens is this um, enzyme becomes phosphorylated. So some hormone signal 
The external signal binds to a, a receptor on the outside of the membrane. All right, and um, when that happens, it activates this cascade that results in the phosphorylation of lipase. Um, there's a lot of steps to it. I'm not going to go into great detail on it. I'm just going to say that it's going to be phosphorylated. It's going to become active, and it's going to begin um, the process of beta oxidation here. Okay, it's going to begin the, this this process. Um, when when the cell needs energy, okay. When there's a signal that there's there's some energy lacking here, we need some energy. We need some ATP. So this is it's how that's going to work. And um, when fatty acids are oxidized, they produce either acetyl CoA, okay, and glycerol. That's basically what they produce. They only produce acetyl CoA and glycerol when they're when they're broken down. So what what you wind up with here is that the glycerol can be converted to glyceraldehyde three phosphate, okay, and that glyceraldehyde three phosphate can enter the pro enter the pathway of gluconeogenesis and make glucose. And the way that works, I have that one drawn out as well, is essentially you know I mean it's actually a, a little bit simpler than what I showed you before, but w what happens here is we start with glycerol, um, ATP is hydrolyzed, glycerol kinase is the enzyme, and we and we end up with this product here, or this intermediate, I should say, L-glycerol-3-phosphate. Okay, so we end up with this L-glycerol-3-phosphate. So remember where we're going here. We're going from glycerol to gl glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, which can enter gluconeogenesis, make glucose. So we make this L-glycerol-3-phosphate. Then what happens here is um, NAD plus is reduced to NADH plus H plus, and that's reduced by an, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction. It's called glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase. And that results in a familiar molecule, which you should be familiar with in the, from the glycolysis videos or from your studies of glycolysis, and that is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Okay, so we, result, we end up with dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and that quickly is converted um, to D-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay. And we and we know that from um, and we know that from uh, the glycolysis reaction. Okay, we remember this is a process that glycerol this dihydroxyacetone phosphate. It's an extra step, but it ends up being converted to glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Okay.